this signal will be a key to our system yet? For sure? Okay. How's that sound, Peter? Okay. John, can you post that we'll be starting at about five minutes? And I'm going to make an announcement to the room. Are we out in the, in the big room? And
Well, I don't want it to be. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Robert Sayers and Blake from the kitchen table on this hot 80-degree day here in the most northwest corner, the most northwest city, the most northwest state in the lower 48. You are right here with us in Bellingham, Washington. We are on Marine Drive. If, you, if you're on a bicycle, you could bicycle by. You might even hear us as you cycle down Marine Drive. Here we are, happy to be in this beautiful backyard, and Jan Peters is on my right today. Aaron Harmonson back there on the base, and Bellingham's own poet, we're so proud and excited to have Robert Lashley as our special guest today. Robert has a book, new book of poems out, a new novel out, and he and I have uh, been aware of each other and, and friends at a distance for at least a decade, if not more. And I'm always excited when I see what he's got going on, and I'm excited today to have him here at the kitchen table. Last weekend, the kitchen table turned up at the Northwest Tune-Up Festival where we had various artists who were performing at the festival come and join us. And they would do one of their songs and then we would collaborate. We had a band from New York City called the Easy Star All Stars. A seven or eight piece reggae band came with us. I was really hoping we'd have a chance to collaborate on a song, but they had to run to their sound check on the main stage. This is what we were gonna do. This old song of mine from my record called a memorable series, whoa. What is that record called? Once you go reggae, all the emphasis has fallen in a different place. A long series of memorable nights. Forgotten is the name of the record. The name of the song is In a Poem. Well, I gave you all my kisses. In a poem, babe In a poem, babe In a poem The ones you said You've been missing, babe In a poem, babe In a poem There was no start, there was I 
I'll try and compensate, babe For all the lines I made Oh, I gave all my kisses In a poem, babe In a poem Thank you very much. So fun to do something new with an old song. Here we are on a hot 80 degree day. And for those of you who are viewing at your home kitchen table in other parts of the country, you have to understand how hot that is for us right here, right now. It's very hot. It's not hot. We're in the shade. But if you're, say, driving your car at 4 o'clock and it's 80 degrees in the most northwest corner, the most northwest city, the most northwest state in the lower 48, you think thoughts like, it's too hot. It's just absolutely too hot, absolutely too hot. While we understand other parts of the country are experiencing truly way too hot weather, we're just not up to that. So we're happy that it's it's mellowing around 80 degrees. It, it really gives us reason to feel like we've experienced summer and reason when fall comes to enjoy the fall. So happy all around here in this beautiful backyard. Now this we've started out the show. we got to let you know we do have a drink of the week. It's a plum basil. Is that right? Plum basil cider from the honeymoon meadery they have provided the live show audience here we wish you could all be here and drinking this i'm going to have my first sip right now if you believe it i started the show without even a first sip so my diction must be better than it's going to become i really want to kill the wow that's wow that's glorious that. perfect on a day like today wow do visit them there on the state street alley wow mm. And now is the point where we ask the trivia question. I'm going to ask you the, the question. Robert Lashley, our, our host, uh, our host, our guest, I'm the host. See, one sip of cider and you forget what's going on altogether. Robert Lashley is our guest, and he has a brand new, is it poems or novel, that, uh, Never Dreamed You'd Leave Me in Summer? That's a novel. And, and uh, he's going to tell you more about that later. So I'm not going to say the wrong thing in front of himself and God and everyone else right now. We'll just keep moving along. But I want to let you know that you what you already know is Never Dreamed You'd Leave Me in Summer, of course, is a song sung by Stevie Wonder and Joan Baez and many other people, too. I, I did a little investigation. There's even some distant cousin of mine by the name of James Blake who's out there, and he does a version of that song. And Phil Collins even did a version of Never Dreamed You'd Leave Me in Summer. So the trivia question today is, we know that Stevie Wonder wrote and recorded it first, but who was the co-writer? of that song when Stevie Wonder <coughs> recorded that and released it first there in 1971. Who co-wrote Never Dreamed You Leave Me in Summer? We're looking for answers in the comments and if your comment looks like you just looked up Wikipedia, it's not as exciting as other types of comments. <coughs> If you're with us now, that means you're not up at the Mission Folk Festival where two great Louisiana musicians are playing. Just Jordan, Jordan Thibodeau and Cedric Watts. And Jordan Thibodeau played Bellingham at Boundary Bay Brewery just this past Thursday, and we all really enjoyed that. So we're going to think about those fellas while we play this song here called Louisiana. If we get to Louisiana, things will be better. If we get to Louisiana, things will be fine. If we make it down to Lafayette, drink my 
feel and cool my jet If we get to Louisiana Things will be better I love San Francisco It's true I love San Francisco for you Ocean blowing through A pastel shade of blue Through the afternoon Smiling Baton Rouge Low light dancing to the blues Two step or three Whatever I had I was happy to lose For a while Places where it's warm. Your body's been cold since the day that it was born. The rain in the Pacific West sends you low like all the rest. To dream of places where it's warm. If we get to Louisiana, things will be fine. If we make it down to Lafayette, drink my fill and cool my jet. If we get to Louisiana, things will be better. Thank you very much. I wish I'd stayed that afternoon. Wish I'd stay a little longer Wish I'd stayed that afternoon 
gotten to know you a little wider. Sun was setting in the east. The rain came from the ground. I tried to play it straight. I'd stayed that afternoon Removed my hands from the wheel I wish I'd have had the strength To find out how you feel Wish I'd lifted you so high Ship had struck the ground. I wish I'd enjoyed the view from the upside down. It won't come back again. The blackbird don't sing twice. You turn your back. Covered with us. Stayed past the morn, fell into the mist. Wish I'd seen the close of day, felt it turn into a twist, just like it was he.
Oh, we're having such a wonderful time here. On Peter's on my right on the harmonica. That's Aaron Harmonson on the bass in this beautiful backyard here in the most northwest corner of the most northwest city, the most northwest state in the lower 48, Bellingham, Washington, my hometown. And it is time for what we do on this show. Uh, Jan, can I borrow a harmonica? Whoa. I won't touch it with my mouth. This is very special. It's a, it's a pre-war. Yeah, tell us about this harmonica. Oh, yeah, before I use it as a bell. That is a fully restored pre-war. Which war? World War II. There's been so many of them. Yeah, so it's like 1930s, from wow. the 1930s or something. Wow. Uh, now, some, the, now, the modern harmonicas say Honer. This one says Mr. Honer. Mm -hmm. You have a Mr. Honer. Same guy. Same guy. But eventually they dropped the Mr. They dropped the Mr. They dropped the Mr ahead of the time there in the post-war. Um, and this one is A440. Reportedly. Reportedly. <laughs> well, here at the kitchen table, it is time for the third song, Check-In. Thank you for the, the usage of that harmonica in a somewhat inappropriate way, but I was gentle. Uh, what we have to tell you is the answer to the trivia question. Sirita Wright whose name got turned to Rita Wright at some point. She was in the, uh, in the Motown family. She sang with the Supremes and also with uh, Martha and the Vandells. And she was actually the second in line to take over from uh, the leadership position in the Supremes, but didn't work out. But she co-wrote that wonderful song that people love so much that we're gonna learn more about why Robert Lashley loves it so much in a little bit. But mm. this is only the third song check-in, so we have to we have to do two more songs. That's the way the show goes. And what else can I tell you about her? I can tell you she was born in 1946, post-war. She was born after that harmonica was made, and she died in 2004, so she's no longer with us, but her song lives on. As I mentioned last weekend, we were at the Northwest Tune-Up Festival, which happened right here in downtown Bellingham, where there used to be a George Pacific tissue mill and now there's a big empty space that the creatives of Bellingham have turned into a cargo container beer fiesta anytime you go down there and just enjoy yourself and you're right down there by the water but you can't see the water mostly what you see are children very small children going extremely fast on bicycles in the air where they call that a pump track and uh, it's not for the faint of heart to take witness of that it's really a, 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 a quite a testament to the human capacity both parenting and of the children themselves. This pump track, you're sitting there enjoying your beer next to a cargo container and children are flying through the air. That was the backdrop for our show down there. And we got to collaborate with these great artists and it was so fun for me because there were some artists that I wouldn't usually come across such as, I think we would go ahead and call Mariba. Would you call her R&B? Looking to, for Aaron Harmonson, for the radio audience. You know, I was looking at Aaron Harmonson for that pause. I think R&B, modern pop. I think I'd call her modern pop. And I got to collaborate with her and sing this song with her, which was, she's way out of, of my league, but because it was my show, I got to participate. Isn't that a nice thing about uh, leadership? So uh, I'm going to do a tribute to her. I really, really appreciate her coming on the show, and I like this tune of hers. I'm going to sing it for you here. by the artist Mariba out of LA right now. Grew up in outside Philadelphia. We came to understand on our show. 
When the water's rushing up your neck And the ground leaves your feet Look around and see what you've got left Did you get free? I'm giving all of it without regret What's the worst that it could be? It needed more than just a check to check, trying to get free. Not trying to get by. Trying to get free. I'm not trying to get by. Trying to get free, not trying to get by. Just trying to get free, not trying to get by. I'm trying to get free. I'm not trying to get by I'm trying to get free I'm not trying to get by I'm trying to get free I'm not trying to get by I'm trying to get free I'm trying to get free I'm trying to get free And we'll do one more song and then bring up the great Robert Lashley we're going to stay in the realm of plain songs written by friends and acquaintances of mine who have one name. The last one was from Ariba. This next one is also from the M section of the songwriter library. This comes from Milton. Well, we close down at the hoedown. Easy takedown without a breakdown. Packed the band up, filled the van up, had some hours left to kill. Didn't plan it, but I was stranded in the old hood, up to no good. Clubs were sold out, it was cold out, and I don't like standing still. Now the east side is the B side to a sad song. It's not a bad song, but it's been left stacked by the junk racks of the thrift store on the floor. And the sidewalk and the side talk with the hip folks and the hip jokes and the hip clothes when the wind blows fade away forevermore. Some say it's not the place they knew. That may be sadly true I'm so sad to be, I'm so glad to be walking around in the city Down in Scranton, kids are ranting about a juke show that I don't know By the stellar fortune teller waves her cards across the street and my eyes glance at the short pants and the big shots Dressed like robots with the spray shoes And the new dew sparkling silver at the feet I'll never get the whole bit down It's not my turf anymore, it's not my town I'm so glad to be walking around in the city
walked these streets since I was ten. Somehow tonight it's new again. I'm so glad to be walking around in the city. And the lamplights and the clothes shops and the banjos and the boom box and the headbands and the trash cans and the trombones and the calzones and the movies and the dive bars and the skateboards and the old cars and the old men and the young girls with the dreadlocks and the side curls and the gold teeth and the fake pearls and the trailers and the sailors and the church saints and the spray paints and the tacos and the wackos and the warhos and the lou reeds and the fresh fruit and the bad seeds on the speakers on the headphones down on chestnut down on holly and the curry and the red beans and the junkies and the drag queens and the bebop and the hip hop and the punk rock and the street talk on every paved inch on every park bench on every tree branch on every dude ranch on every hot rod on every gum wad on every anarchist parade i'm so glad i'm so glad i'm so glad I'm so glad to be walking around in the city. One more time, y'all. And keep that applause going. My absolute pleasure to welcome for the first time to the kitchen table, my friend Robert Lashley, making his way up here to the kitchen table. So excited to hear more about what he has going on and hear some of his work and just see what's going on in the world of Robert Lashley. Welcome to the kitchen table. Hello, friend. Yeah, hello, friend. And hello, everyone. Um, I'm glad to be here and glad to be in this lovely table, glad to be in this lovely yard. and. Glad for anybody just seeing us in the the unreal real that is the um, internet. I'm always glad to be here. Yeah, thank you. Big year for you. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited. Two new books this year. Is that what I got organized in my brain? I have one new book, but I have like one old book that's in its third in its third printing. It got hot again after it got heat. <laughs> yeah, baby. I like the idea of an old something getting hot again. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that plays well, this audience and all audiences. I'm with that. Now, you left, you, you threw a reference there that I didn't catch, the AWP. The, Associ <laughs> the Association of Writers and Poets. It's okay. They meet um, every year They in, in, different lo in, a, in, in a certain location. They met in Seattle, and um, I was very glad that um, my third book of poems um, sold out of the printing at, at, at that um at, at this at the Seattle gathering in March of this year, and um, I'm I'm very grateful that people have responded to my poetry book for this long. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, Jeremy, are we getting his mic in the room? Should I should I come closer? We can feed it to Not you. Not a you problem. You seem comfortable in your in your placement there. Can yeah. So you are very welcome here at the kitchen table to do absolutely anything you do want to do, and I see you brought both of your your your, your third pressing. Yeah. Now is it like uh, is that, that like the golden pressing, the silver pressing, the platinum pressing? Do we have terms like that in publishing? Um, no, but we but um, but we should though. Yeah, we could. And of course, the true fans all want the first pressing. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the diehards, the third pressing is that's just for the Johnny Come Latelys. Oh, it is, but I do not look them in the mouth yeah. because yeah, yeah. Yeah. third pressings the royalties are higher oh, but nice. the first pressing they, they all, they're all together they all they all yeah. all readers form together yeah. to get me um to get me pizza and weed money and i am yeah. grateful for all of them yeah yeah 
And they go together so well, pizza and weed. Yes. You can't, can't have one without the other. Let's uh, let's see what you want us what lay on us. I want to start um with this with this poem in this book from the Green River Valley. Um, it's called um, "Song of the OG Triple OG Bird Rescue Man." Blood is the color that mixes late September. It tints the concrete of a late sunset mass. It makes a mass of brothers and blackbirds. The OG and white will take them. It is on the wings of those beat and broke in migrating migrations. Those caught up in wounds and rickety structures. Those lost in aromas, poisons, and intoxicants, elusive until they couldn't breathe. The OG and white will bring them home. Elusive is the errant gangster disciple as he washes his pavement of red. Elusive his second act with body bags. Elusive his church with invisible t chimes and its yellow tapes fluttering in the leaves with dust to dust coloring everything around it. Lord, I'll go sweet been through the city where my hood brothers have rolled before. The old man claps and cleaner particles become a set of flying night birds. The old man claps and ruins of a playground become neither ruins nor a playground. The arcs of the busted jungle gym lift and resheath their pipe swords. Lift every rock that interacts with his ash and the swing set, as the swing set chains stop their hanging. At dusk, home goings are everywhere. Agony moves through Anglican storefronts. Agony lies still in the gravel. Dope boys barely make their stops. Dope fiends run to the water. At dusk, the OG flies place after place to give rosaries and proper burials. I will stand someday by, by the river. Won't be back on this block. No more. The OG and White will take them. The OG and White will bring them home. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that you appreciate it. One of the things that um, I um, um, I've really been focusing on the, in the last few years has been the motif of forgiveness and empathy and grace and how we are all in dire need of it and how environmental circumstances and um, inside and outside forces um, cause us to trip up sometimes and it's, it's all a matter of stumbling toward it and it's all a matter of, of allowing also a matter of giving it out um, and it's a really big theme in this book. It's um, me um, coming home to teach um, after um, writing um, my first two books and just me seeing the neighborhood uh, uh, once again and how it's changed. Um, the idea of grace is really heavy um, in my novel, which comes out on August 22nd. Um, um, called I Never Dreamed You'd Leave in Summer. Um, and um, I'm really excited about it. Um, I am, I, I, um, I'll read a, uh, I'll read the, the I'll, I'll read the, the blurb and I'll read a small snippet. Um, here's the blurb for I Never Dreamed in Summer because like most authors, I am terrible at describing my own work. 
Albert, a young black student with a troubled past, has been offered a second chance by the friends of his family and his late mother. Buoyed by the supportive working class culture of a black beauty shop, he finds himself dodging campus politics and navigating community tensions while learning to face his own guilty conscience. But when scandal erupts, fate takes a turn that encompasses radical politics, sexism and racism, and Albert is forced to reassess everything he thought he knew about dignity and absolution. Told through a series of letters between Albert and his mentor, Robert Lashley's long-form fiction debut is a ferocious, irreverent, and deeply compassionate work. A rich portrait of life in Tacoma, Washington, and the interwoven communities that define it, I Never Dreamed in Summer is a protest novel that breaks every rule of protest novels. It leaves the reader with a complex parable on the question of grace, who needs it, who's scared of it, who runs from it, and who struggles to accept it. I'll read a short snippet. Um, and it's a snippet that um, explains itself. This is Andre to his mentor. This is Albert to his mentor. I'm so sorry that I blew up at, at, on you and got paranoid at the food bank. I'm so sorry that circumstances dictated that we had to see each other again there. I just found out that you quit and broke down on our, and are back on the block. Worse than that, I read the article that excoriated you for it. I just melted, man. Being excommunicated from the family is a freaking painful thing. I can tell you that firsthand. But to be roasted by it online and to be told that you're not strong by some legacy dude when you've been strong all your damn life. You told me what happened to you in these streets getting beat up and stuff. And you told me what happened to your moms. I'm so sorry you had to go out in the college like that. I like to tell you that I ignore the blogs and the articles related to Everett and the Nisqually incident, but I can't. I have to though. I've been fighting the paranoia and the voices in my head for a while. And when I saw you, I saw the unrelenting stress of those years. Even though I don't feel bad about going off on Everett, I feel bad that I called you a slur. You were such a good mentor and so nurturing to me, and I shouldn't have gone half cocked at you, especially when you were in the same food bank line as me. I'm trying to live a peaceful, quiet life away from the squally. But I'm going to testify for Judith next week. I have my routine. I take my daily sandwich from aid or the food bank, go to the library, and read some of my mama's books. Then I go home and act as a guard for the church ladies going in and out of the Winthrop projects. After that, I go home and watch TV if there isn't a bingo night at the VFW hall down the street. Because I help the bingo ladies get home safe, a couple of the dough boys give me free weed. It's the best pain medication for me, to be honest. I tried to go the straight and narrow route, but the legal dope people in counseling put me on shit that makes my brain hurt. This stuff makes my brain do weird things that doesn't help. At least free weed doesn't make me faint and not think. I go to the library to get the past out of my head. I'm trying to write the book that makes my mama come back to me. I hear my mama's voice and see her cry so much. She isn't taunting me as, uh, as much as I'm trying to acquire the skills to get everything in my, my life right to hear her, to hear her voice guide me. Like you say, you hear your mother's. I hope we can talk again someday, Andre. If I see you again, let's walk to the food bank. I heard you got a job at a bar, and I don't drink anymore, but I do some things at the library. I would love to see you there. We could talk about life and books in a way like we used to, or at least go for a walk. I don't regret the best times that we had. I don't regret what I learned in college, 
especially with my encounters with Judith. I want to catch, ca catch up with her again someday. It's just that for all the social media and cultural stress at the school, she doesn't need me right now to add any more. I've just been too sick to go over there. I'll help you in these new streets if you help me process this. I still have a lot to process, man. One more thing, dog. I'm gonna give you some life gain. Go home and say you're sorry to the shop. They love you, brother. They'll take you back. Just dump the highbrow militant shit and start over. This is my gift to you. My penance for years of being a bum. So yeah, that's the um. Yeah. Congratulations, August 22nd. Yes, I'm really excited. Um, the Mercer Press and um, the um, opening day is, is going to be at, um, um, at Elliott Bay Books and on September 11th I'm going to be at Village Books and I'm Excellent. excited for that. Yeah. Excellent. And tell us more, what, do, what does the life of a, 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 a novelist look like? The, are we talking you're going to be on the Greyhound bus going city to city, wine and cheese parties every night and uh, readings and various... Yeah, but, I, to, but to be honest, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> me too. You yeah. get paid for you like, you get paid for 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 doing your doing your your stuff. Yeah. I mean, like, the only expenses that I'll have is my is 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 my cab to the to the bus station and yeah. and somebody picks you up on the other end. Yes, and, and says nice to see you. Yes, and yeah. and and takes you out to dinner. Yeah. I know people complain about this in the New Yorker, but it's like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that jaded yet. I think it's yeah. great. Yeah, I love it. So, and, and the publisher will set this up for you. They set up ten readings already. Yeah, um, buddy. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm stoked. I'm, um, and we're aiming for more. And um, and and if and if um, and I'm just just I'm one. A lot of people sacrificed for, for for this book to come out, and they took risks. Because let me tell you something: to publish this book in this climate is a risk. Yeah. But I want to focus on the readers who, who who are open to risk and open to new new things. And I know this is a brand new thing, and and and, and it isn't and it's different. And, and I'm getting a lot of really good vibes. The reviews have been enthusiastic, and I'm really grateful. I love it. Well, I got some questions coming. I'd like to ask you, but maybe we, maybe we get another poem from you, you first, got so you it. Get, get a bit more of, of of the straight stuff before I take us down some ways of conversation. You got it, brother. This is um, this poem is, you know, for 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 all of us are getting up there, but still. Are romantic. This poem is called Value Village Love Poem. Old jackets don't fit, love, but did they ever? Insignias and hats fade in the cycles of discount trend rides. Jerseys and spanks contract arbitrarily and scarfs hollow in the Klieg lights without the heads that gave them meaning. Age and price may dictate our shape, but wherever you are is the boulevard. Let me adorn you a crown of price check rosaries. Let my love be the alms that never signal for without you hoop earrings or metal. Extensions just threads away from their orbit, away from their center and star. Let them price to infinity our posters and memories. Let them splice the hood to the meridians of invisibility in my arms, you are never gone. My dear around the way girl, dance with me by the sail colors. Time may erase all style to memory, but the intercom is playing our song. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Let me get 
I, I like this this poem because sometimes you gotta look at your, yourself. Sometimes it's like you realize, like you know, you get you get up in age and you and you want to live a long life, and sometimes you have to look at your own your own demons. And this is me looking at my own demons. Said the ghetto nerd to Narcissus at the bar. You gazed in water, I stared in Hennessy. What you ran to, I drank with blown out eyes. Yet we both cannot identify life around us. We, in stylized defeats of will, turn clarity into sleights of hand. We, in the autumn of a misspent youth, are wanderers self-created. We argued who we died for, beauty or truth, though the unseen in us magnifies the lie that we gazed and named it clearly, that we fixed its fluid currents and movements and illusions that became our cage, and boast that curdled into fits of pity, we mistook vision for blunder. Unable to leave, Lord, how we hover, menageries of ruin, in self-preserved youth, cue points on a cyclorama. Choking all metaphor into self-serving drama that stayed still as we struggled to sell it. Though we wanted to be seen, we could not make people see it. So, F this bottle, I will leave. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and sharing this with us at the kitchen table. Glad to, man. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, some David Pender Lofgren is my uh, co-conspirator in creating this, and then he got busy with other things, so he, you might notice he's not here. And what he does at the show, at, at this point, we have a segment of the show called Two Beats with the Drummer, where he asks a few straight-up questions, not the sort of bantering, meandering questions I tend to ask people, but, he, you know, sort of straight-up, you know, like uh, uh, fresh air, you know, that okay. kind of stuff. But uh, so... When I attempt to do two beats with the drummer, it turns into, uh, you know, somewhere in between. But I'm listening to you here, and i got a couple questions. Um, hit, 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 hit me. I, I, there's a couple lines jumped out at me. I, I maybe I, Correct me if I'm wrong. Is the line, agony runs through Anglican storefronts? That's the, um, um, yeah. I'm close. You I'm, got it. I'm close. And then another line I just heard, the autumn of our misspent youth. Uh, beautiful lines. Beautiful Thank you. Lines. Thank you. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of Dylan Thomas. I want to talk to you about Dylan Thomas. Dylan Thomas was huge in my f my family because I got Dylan Thomas through my Uncle Mo. Okay. My Uncle Mo was the first poet um, in, our f in our family. And he um, was a veteran. Um, he came from a place called the Valley in Mississippi. Um, he learned how to read because after the flood in 1927, um, he went to, um, I mean, he, his schooling was at the knee of a bootlegger named, and I can't make this up, Fast Eddie Johnson. And what Eddie Johnson would do was give the case if you, if, if you gave the boy a book. And one of those books was called um, The Golden Slippers. It was an anthology of Negro poetry by um, Langston Hughes and Arme Bonetemps. And that's where he got the, um, uh, um, that's where he got the passion for it. And, and, and he was in his late 20s and his early 30s when Dylan Thomas was starting to make the tours. Right. And he, he saw him in New York, and he was so moved by how formal, but also how churchy. Yeah. Like, like, like you know how Thomas was influenced by the Waltz, pre Waltz preachers. Yeah. And how he could alchemize speech and the rhythms of speech into form. Um, you know. You know, he, he, he was carrying the ball from from like Gerald Manley Hopkins, um, and carrying and what what he was also um, 
what he was also what he was, what he also was moved by Thomas, and, and and something that a lot of American critics don't get, is that Thomas was very big on on Caesar Vallejo, in the in the kind of the imagist, um, 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 Latin American, you know, modernismo, modernismo um, poets of the 1920s. So. You have this sort of, like, you know how, um, if, like, you if like if you read, you know, Vallejo's, like, like, you can you it, it, it's so, you know, condensed with these wild images that you almost forget that it's a formal. And Thomas was very, very influenced by that, and I think a lot of American critics don't get is they think oh these wild grand images and it's like oh that's not overwriting that's seasoning mm. I hope that answers your question <laughs> <laughs> you gave me a few things to go uh, read and, and look up and that, that, that excites me I, um, I'll, I'll, I'll stay on this note here we have a, a friend back here a statue and our host Reed and Louise may have to help me uh, remember the name but it's inspired by uh, Rainer Rainer, Rainer Maria Rilke. Yeah. Yeah. And and tell us more about who this is exactly. The name of, of our friend over here, and hopefully the camera can cut to this friend. We can see. What what's the name, Reed? I see. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I I'm a I, you know, such a novice in the world of poetry, but we know that there's these famous letters to aspiring poets, and uh, so maybe I. Do you write letters to aspire? Do aspiring poets write to you, and, and do you have time to write them back? I've been. I'm just, I'm just going to run the lip here a minute because I've been reading about um, uh, Allen Ginsberg and his complaint when he was living at the hotel in Paris in the 50s was that he couldn't get any writing done because he was spending too much time doing correspondence. So it's not actually email that's getting us down. I think it's it's the fact that we're so social and writing back to people. If we have to not write back to people to get things done, you go. <laughs> I'm um, trying to part, trying to say this as elegantly as possible. I really appreciate the question. Um, I have learned to quote unquote delegate um, my time with younger writers um, because I. Can't be open to giving input, especially in the Pacific Northwest, mm -hmm. because hell hath no fury yeah. than a poet who has been told no, or maybe you need to work on this. Yeah, yeah. It's such been such a graphic thing that um, I was. You know, just last month, I was shorted of a four hundred dollar check from a poet who didn't like the criticism that I gave him. If you don't, if you don't, uh, if you don't want to have a have a beer poured for you, don't order it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a feeling I relate to. I've always wanted that beer, and sometimes it tastes. Better. And uh, fascinating, fascinating to, to hear you speak uh, so uh, carefully about that subject. Uh, maybe a little bit of a biography question. You mentioned that this novel came from moving back home to teach, and I, I believe you're from Tacoma originally. And did you go back to, to Tacoma to do some teaching? I did for a while. Yeah. Um, I did until um, I, 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 I lived half my time in Tacoma and half my time in Bellingham until the pandemic. Okay. And then um, um, a lot of people did not process their wounds well. Yeah. Yeah. And not a lot of people in positions of power yeah. did not process them. And I, I had to sort of back away from poetry and try something 
a new which is a, which is a novel <laughs> which the world seems to be loving yeah uh, now would you give us another bit from the novel or another poem what suits you in, in, in the, at this kitchen table um mm, I'll give you how about I give you another bit from the novel yeah just um, um I'll, this I'll give you this this snippet this is um, um, this is this is um, um, Albert to his mentor. Once he's gotten, once he has, after he's been fired, gone back to um, working and helping out at the salon. Andre, so you telling me you're back? Nona is back. Aisha is back for the winter break, and you want to do good for the shop. So let me give you the new installation of the game at your layoffs. If you are there in the morning before McAllister, make sure you wash her headscarves. Replace them if they get bad. Do this without her knowing. McAllister lives to get the Diana Ross Mahogany 1975 scarf they sell at the Saturday swap meet at the B&I, but she has a Marshall Warfield babyface flat top perm that fades them out quick. Pert a Berkeley mint in her Patti LaBelle caskins and say they came from black trans Jesus. Don't be surprised if she asks you about the game. Trust me, bruh. She will ask you about the game. Brush you, brush up on your ESPN. If your Layla gets a little wavy with the Crown Royal, tell her to drink Perrier because it's good for her skin. And Joe Lewis drink it. And make sure she, to get the bottles of Perrier because when she holds the bottles, she thinks of the pictures of Joe Lewis drinking Perrier at her grandparents and they were the only people to love her as a child. When Nona and Aisha come in, have an iced caramel frappe for them and a single shot mocha, respectively, with a small little flask of Seagram's to put in in case Nona is in a mood. A skinny little boy named Ladarius will come in to try and sell pillows he stole from his homophobic uncle at the swap meet. He interrupts when it's busy but he means well and he listens, so never get a time for him to trade his, shit, his stuff. The rest I ain't got to tell you. I know you are on hashtag Team Nona, and Nona is on hashtag Team You. Just lean in on what you know, learn on the go, and know when to shut the fuck up. I'll be back someday. We love you. They will be so happy with you. They will be happier with you than they were with me. I got debts, man, and I still die a little each time thinking about them. I know I shouldn't. I got a wonderful woman, and I know the shop loves me. But debts don't work like that. Not the ones you can't pay. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, we schemed a little bit about having uh, these musicians back you up a little bit on a piece. Should we do that now? Yes. All right, let's bring the band back. Uh, Jan Peters and Aaron Harmonson come back up to the stage. And uh, looks like you picked up the book of poems. And, and let's see what happens here. Thank you, everybody, for being here at Robert, Sarah's and Blake from the kitchen table, both in the live audience and at home, wherever you may be. Jeremy is going to encourage getting closer to that microphone. Especially now that we're going to have the, uh, the music kick yes, in. Yes, yes. Yeah. You were playing um, uh, the um, the Red River Valley slash sweeping through the city um, a little bit. Most, I think you were playing the Red River Valley, um, um, and I think this might fit for this poem. This is called Not a Pop Trap Queen Funeral. It's when I was um, burying my best friend and partner for 23 years um, in, um, in an Atlanta park after she had passed away. Trees take after kinfolk, both, both distant and too close. Holes in the 85 cracked wall we play evidence of processions and scene. The bankhead service, families in Lincolns, the going meal in the fish in hook spot, the steampunk chariots in Chattahoochee Park 
but we send her remnants to the river. Phones playing the horn of a homegoing bounce clear a path to a requested place. Funeral boys and gangster girl vets burn violence into sage, into violets that fly to, the, to where we lead her to the element and soil. From this valley our bee girl is leaving. We shall miss her fly self and sweet smile. For drugs took all the street, sister sunshine, who had brightened our block. For a while. Sons come back to iterations of storefronts. Allegories of the saved ring from the red soils as infirmed hoodlums kneel. On the ground, we are the conquered, the unsaved, the roadblocks and antagonists to victory and fable. The pestilence that spurred walls and mansions, that shadowed jails and fallout shelters. We send her away. We, false sidekicks, offer our trap queen more human than fable. Lord, I'm sick by our sides if you love us. Hasten to be a adieu. Just remember our green river valleys and folks who wanted to love you. One more color. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you like what you hear, I have books books for sale. Yeah, very good. I'm going to get one. You can count on one sale tonight. Wonderful. Well, you were, you were talking about forgiveness. Yeah. I have a tune called Forgiveness. I think I'll play that one. Beautiful. And we'll see what, what that evokes out of yourself. And uh, we'll just let it roll a little bit here in this beautiful backyard. My daughter playing over there in her... Pretend food truck, life is good. Let it roll, let it sway, let it slide, let it step, some fall towards forgiveness, but I ain't falling yet. Fall. Forgiveness again. I went back for something I could not be without. All I found was indifference until it. Give out, give on out to forgiveness again. I was down in the bottom, I'd fallen from the top. All I found was nothing 
till I got up, got on up to forgiveness So nice, do it twice. I got something. Yeah. For a bounty, up the bar ladder to the bay dive roof, he drinks here. Without duty, love is lined and proofed in the last face he cannot see. The dirty water leaks below his port. The dirty water crests above the port and disrupts his visions in the waves. Dreams in the fevered dark side leave as his last call all to light dims. His shore myth in blackness finally fails him and the full tide taunts in nothingness. Serpents above ground and in sea tails rhyme up and down rickety levee docks. Serpents in his rickety lit house mind conflate shipmen's dreams for facts. They, complain, they conflate her human wants for vices in his loveless icy sky. They, they, they conflate no yarn, no harbor mists, to the end of a journey. And if she asks you where I am, tell her. So come back, home sunshine, the door open yet fall where you want to I just don't want to forget to forget forgiveness again it up. Thank you very much, everybody, for being with us here on this beautiful, beautiful 80-degree July day. You just, we take heat like this and we put it in our back pocket, don't we? Yes, we do. We're going to need it in November. Yes, we will. And we're probably going to need it even next June. Yes, Sometimes we, we really need it in June. More stall. January. January. We are hosted by our friend Reed, Reed Smith. I always call him Reed. When your name's Reed, you don't have to think about the last name too much. Reed made a record here, made a record of his original songs, and uh, Jan Peters played on that record, and Aaron Harmonson played on that record, and we're all here in Reed and Louise's beautiful garden today. So let the circle keep going around. 
And thank you to John Henry. He's the man back there with the screens, making all the ones and the zeros. Bring this kitchen table to your kitchen table. And that's Jeremy over there with the camera and the beautiful head of hair. He's the man who turns this show into the podcast. You can go to robertsarasandblake.com, then click on the kitchen table, and then that will take you to the podcast. But you don't even need to do that. Just go to wherever you listen to podcasts and type in Robert Sarah's and Blake from the kitchen table, and you come across the one-hour version of our show with all the wonderful people, such as Robert Lashley, who get to be, who we get to have on the show. Let me rephrase that the way I mean it. We close every show. With a song from our friend Hank Waddell from Ireland. Cork City wrote the song, and we love it. And well, Kathy's gotten the jar going there, so we do ask your donation there. There is no donation as great as the donation. And I like to say always, for those of you of a certain age, we do provide an opportunity to turn an annuity into a gratuity. That's right. Not, not every time do you have that option, and we like to provide that. Where are we? We're right here. And if a poem hits you in the midst of this one, too, we'd love to have that. See what happens. See what happens. Well, it's great to see you. Because we thought you were dead. Did you come back to life? Did you get out of your bed? It's great to see you. Or is that your ghost? But heard you were gone. Burnt toast. It's great to see you. Whisper nothing, sing softly on your ear. Try not to cut short the moment that's here. Shadow it might be, the feeling's clear. I couldn't ask for anything more. It's all about the times we share. It's all about the times we share. Beyond Peters. So it's great to see you, are you gonna stay? Are you here for the long night? Are you leaving at the break of day? It's great to see you. Yeah, it's true. It's great to see you. It's great to be near you. It's all about the times we share. It's all about the times we share. I am a pilgrim, love, a stranger to this. In your varied lands and concentric circles, help me make new threshing floors. I will walk with you, changed in my adapting to the rebound. Our leap in tips and Harley black boots to better corners awaiting. Take me and I will walk with you. Take me and I will walk with you. Take me, my love, and I will walk with you. It's all about the times we share. It's all about the times we share. It's all about the times we 
we share. That's Robert Lashley on my left, Jan Peters all on the harmonica, and Harmonson on the bass, John Hendry on the ones and zeros, and Jeremy puts it all together. Read, read, read. And Louise hosting us here. We'll see you next week. Right on, brother.